We are live! Hello everyone! We'll give it a few moments for folks to um, join us. We will be talking to a representative from CCP today, which is very exciting. I know a lot of folks in our audience are going to be attending CCP in the fall, so that's going to be great. Hi Violet Notes! Um, thank you for joining us today. 12 plus joined. Hi, who's ever watching from the main 12 plus account? Hello. And I see our 12 plus guest account has joined, so they should be able to be joining us. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hi, Joe. I see you're on the 12 plus account. If you click the little group sharing icon at the bottom, I can also maybe invite you. Oh, I see request. We're waiting for you to join. Lots of waiting today. Oh, it's connecting. Hello. You've Hi. Made us. Welcome. You made it. How are I you? Did. I did. I, I can be taught. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> is this a platform you're very familiar with? Or is this your first time joining us someone on a live? It's it's my first time on live. This is the thing. Like, uh, and this will happen to to everybody that's watching this someday. I think the Simpsons Simpsons said it best. Uh, I used to be with it, and then it changed, and I was no longer with it. Uh, <laughs> How it goes, cycle repeats itself. Yeah. So it's it's all good. Like when I was in college, we had um, we had Friendster. Oh, that I remember Friendster. It's the very edges of my memory. That's I think. Yeah, Friendster, uh, MySpace, then Facebook, wow. and then the rest of it all came around. So yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been interesting. But I, I do use Instagram. Um, we use uh, we use it at CCP. It's it's very interesting. I'm still getting the hang of it though. It's definitely a great platform for a lot of things, but it's definitely a new platform for a lot of people. And now we got this whole TikTok thing, apparently going to be banned in 45 days. We don't know. It's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be interesting. I still think probably Microsoft is going to buy it or maybe even Facebook or something. So it'll be a U.S. company, and then that will defeat the entire thing. So oh, yeah, Absolutely. It's just he's just mad that young people are expressing themselves. That's all it is. But anyway, welcome to the – oh, hello, Kendall. Nice to see you. I'm going to wave at your friend. Hiya. Um, cool. So we're just going to jump into it. Um, sure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just to little, give a little context for everyone watching. Um, Joe is a representative from CCP, or I'm sorry, Mr. Corso. I'm sorry to give you a first name. You can call me Joe. It's all good. I'm okay. Joe. <laughs> thank you. So Joe is a representative from CCP. Um, he's going to be walking us through the enrollment process today. Um, so if you have any questions about it, about that whole thing, um, you are welcome to join us. You can drop questions in the comment box and then we will be posting this on our IGTV stream afterwards. So if you are missing the live event, you're watching this afterwards, watch through to the end. The whole thing will be posted there. So great. Awesome. So Joe, we'd love to know a little bit more about you and kind of what's your background and how did you come to work at CCP? Uh, sure. Well, I before I, I moved to Philadelphia, I was the assistant director of, of admissions at a small liberal arts college called uh, Bard College at Simons Rock, which has the very unique distinction of being the only uh, four-year accredited college of liberal arts and sciences that is exclusive for younger scholars. So I worked with a phenomenal group of students that started college around 15, 16 years old. Um, I, I wanted to make a change after almost a decade there. I moved to Philadelphia to uh, work in uh, admissions uh, here at Community College of Philadelphia. Part of it is because I also wanted to work for an institution that could provide an affordable start to an educational path. Um, because while uh, you know education is so important, it's really become very cost prohibitive here in the United States. So, and I, I fell in love with working with, with students and helping them achieve their, their educational goals. It's just something I really love doing. Yeah. And speaking from personal testimony, I can say that Joe has connected so many student, 12 plus students to different resources at CCPs, set them up with the whole enrollment process. He's somebody that we really trust to reach out to and make connections with. And I don't know how many times I've called on you and been like, hey, this person hasn't heard back from this. They're like, we're having troubles with their J number. 
and you've just been a great help. So I can vouch for him, guys. Um, <laughs> so maybe if you could talk a little bit more about CCP and maybe like what is your favorite part of working there? What activity or event do you look forward to every year? Maybe even some challenges that you face at the school. Well, this thing, I, every institutional higher education has the things that people love about it. They also have the things that drive them crazy about it. And I like to concentrate more on the, on the positive stuff. Um, so like, I, I love seeing what the students get up to. Like, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a geek. I admit it. I'm a geek. Uh, I love video games. I love cartoons. I love anime. So like some of my, my favorite things to talk about are like the anime club at, at community, the, the video game club, um, seeing the students that are, that are interested in drumming do like, you know, they're outside practicing their, their drums, seeing the students are, are just, they're just being active and making the campus their own. And that's something that's really right now with the whole situation has really hit all of us that work at community hard because we don't get to see all the fantastic things that students get up to. Mm -hmm. But a way that has been supplemented is that we have a great, uh, our student, uh, student life office, student uh, development office, they have really been highlighting all the things our students are getting up to through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, that kind of thing. So that, that gives us a little bit like, yay, kind of thing. Um, so it's, there's a lot of cool stuff like the, the athletic program at Community College of Philadelphia is always fabulous to see. Um, we are a division three school. We will compete on the uh, National Junior College Athletic Association, uh, NJCAA, in many different sports. Um, we have our athletic center. It's always fun to see what students are getting up. Yeah, the athletic center is beautiful, too. I've been there a few times to show students around, and it's got some great classes and offerings, so definitely a cool way to – I remember when I was in college, I just took so many different of those fun, different athletic courses. That was so fun. Um, and I was going to, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, and I know a lot of students, too, going back to the geek thing. Like, even if you're not interested in joining a formal club, I just would always, like, see kids and – including my students, like playing card games in the in the main like campus center. And it wasn't any kind of club. It was just people hanging out and they all like the same stuff. So I think that is a great process as CCP as well. There's always something going on. That's one of the biggest things I tell students is as long as you're willing to maybe go outside your comfort zone a little bit, maybe take a take a take a smart chance. You can find all sorts of different things, and it's it's really cool. Like when I was in college, I had a couple friends that used to, that took up ballroom dancing, like ballroom freaking dancing. Like I'm going like, okay, all right, you guys have fun with that. <laughs> That's so fun, yeah. Um, cool. Well, if it's all right with you, unless there's any other things you want to expound upon the glories of CCP. <laughs> I would love to kind of now focus the conversation a little bit about the enrollment process because we have so many students that do attend CCP in the fall and sometimes have some challenges navigating that system or even like understanding what the whole process is like. I thought it'd be really cool to get kind of a behind the scenes breakdown of every section. So I'd love to start with kind of your specialty, the admissions department. It's kind of the first step on the way. We all know that the first step is always to apply, but I'd love to hear kind of what exactly you're responsible for and how you help along the way of the registration process. Sure. So my, my team, uh, which is headed by uh, Diane Kay, my, my manager, and uh, uh, my director, Jason Hand, we oversee, like, the outreach. So, like, this thing. So we go out and talk with students about what we have to offer. We try and demystify the process a bit because it can be a little bit intimidating. Like, okay, well, what, do you, what I have to apply. I have to do all sorts of stuff. Like, what, what do I actually have to do? Like, what really, what, what do I need to get done? Um, and it's – there's a lot of things. And the first step is going to be to do the application. And to make things a little bit easier, we did move our application to be totally online. Um, there's no application fee to apply to Community College of Philadelphia. You're going to not find that at a lot of institutions. Um, yeah, yeah we, we both roll our eyes at that, at that one. I remember back. So uh, much money you spend just applying. For grad schools, oh my gosh, it's even worse. It's like $150 per application. It's crazy. 
it's it's a kicker. It's a kicker. Um, and so the application for Community College of Philadelphia is, is different than you'll find at other institutions as well. Like we're not going to ask for ref, uh, letters of recommendation. We don't ask you for uh, essays. We're just collecting the basic information about you, where you went to high school, what your GPA is, you know, SAT stuff, because we can use that now for, for test optional kind of stuff. Um, also, there is other things that we collect, just contact information, like how what's the best way to get in touch with you. Now, once the application is processed, you give your email, then you get sent your J number. Now, people ask, why is it called a J number? Well, because when we originally got the, the system that covered the student ID numbers, it had a J in it. Yeah, so that's that's why they're called J numbers. That's so funny. I never knew. Mm -hmm. um, so the J number is how you designate a Joe Corso from Joe Corso from Joe Corso from Joe Corso. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be multiple people in the system that have your name or your spelling, and the way that we designate quickly between them is through the J number. So this is why it's really important what, whenever you contact any office or community, you do have your J number handy if you have that. It just makes yeah. things a lot easier. It's also how we verify, you know, who you are, who you say you are kind of thing. Now, there might be additional verification stuff for that, but you know what I mean. Um, so that's that's pretty much what we that, – that's to get things started. From, from there, after the application, you have to get something called placement on your account. Now, placement is how we – now, community colleges are open enrollment institutions, which means we are out there to support, support all those who may benefit for educational and career paths. Now, placement is how we find out what your foundation level is in math and English, and if it would benefit you from taking a pre-college level course to help ensure that you have the, the tools to be successful moving forward in your path. Now, we can do that a number of different ways. Now, we can – through this whole – thing we've had to reevaluate some stuff because we we couldn't have placement testing on campus as we all have for sure yeah but we we've established we can do stuff with your high school gpas now so if you have depend upon your high school gpa you might be granted college level or pre-college level placement um, if you've taken the sat or the act we can use we can um, depend upon the score we can use those for placement um, things like the uh, ap exams if you've taken those we can we can for english and uh and math we can pre-cal we can work with those um but if not, if all else fails, um, we can also oh well also college transcripts we can use those too. But we can but now we also do have the ability to offer limited placement testing either virtually using your computer and a cell phone, or we've reopened uh, main campus for the assessment center for very limited, very limited testing days. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we can't offer the walk-in testing that we used to. Yes, understandable you, you under the circumstances for sure. All right. Am I going a little too much in detail? Okay. No, this is great. I mean, I was going to say, um, so maybe, yeah, now that we're on the assessment center, could you maybe tell us a little bit about what students can expect with the placement test itself? Maybe mm -hmm. kind of content that will be on there and what will happen sure. after they take the exam? Sure. Well, the assessment center is run by a fabulous group of, group of people. Uh, I love this list them all by name, but that would just take too long. Mm -hmm. um, so there are th there are two parts to the, the the exam. Now the first section is going to be the the English section, and that is the English writing section. Um, we're we're not looking for the next great American novel. Okay, we're going to give you a writing prompt. We're looking going to look at your critical thinking skills and nuts and bolts of of your writing. Okay, um, the that is the only portion of the test that is timed. You have one hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, P please guys take the full hour. Okay. Yeah, why not? You got it. Yep. Okay. And you can't, yeah, you can't skip a section and come back. So you got to do the writing section right then and there. Um, the next section is going to be the reading section. And it's going to, you're going to read some stuff and you're going to answer some questions based upon what you read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the final section is going to be the math section. And that is, that's, that's not timed. Oh. I, trust me, I know. I, <laughs> we could go into a long story about how math is not my. <laughs> Um, but it starts off with a couple questions asking about what the last level of math you took in high school, how long it's been since you've taken math, and it starts you off at a certain level of math questions, 10, 10 questions. If you get the majority of those correct, it's going to bump you up to the next level, so on and so forth. So the longer the math test takes, you know, you're doing, you're doing better. It's going to also go through 
Yeah, arithmetic, uh, algebra, algebra two, it might even go up to some pre-calculus stuff for you as well. Yeah. Well, that sounds similarly, we keep talking about grad school. That sounds how a lot of grad GRE formats are, where it kind of changes the content based on how you answer, which I didn't know that about the placement <laughs> exam. That's, that's cool. And a lot of students ask, is there any way that I can prep for it? And I say, yes and no. Um, because uh, no, you can't, it's a, it's a placement that's supposed to gauge what, you, what you've already established, but you can yeah. do some practice tests. And those are yeah. available through College Board's AccuPlace or website. And it just gets rid of some of the, 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 the stress that comes through with, with taking, a, stand, with taking a, a test kind of thing. So I greatly encourage students, yeah, absolutely take a practice test. Take, you won't be able to do the writing section, but just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely recommend to students all the time to do that AccuPlacer practice app. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. And I think what I kind of say is, like, you, your content you know is going to stay the same, but everybody improves the second time they take a test. And so this is your chance to kind of take it one time just to get familiar with the format and get familiar with what it looks like before going in and they test. And then you will be just relying on your knowledge of the content. Nothing is going to take you out of, off guard. Now, I should mention throughout from the application through this, students are going to be getting emails to the email address they indicated on their application. Um, so it's important that if you if you don't get anything from us, check your spam folder. It might have gotten accidentally tossed in there through the, the algorithm. Um, also, students are going to get an email from welcome at ccp.edu, which is going to give them instructions how to access their My CCP Student Portal, which is such an important resource for students. Yeah. Um, so actually, that takes us to my CCP. Now, when they get access to that, um, they're able to access their CCP student email, which is also really important. But I'll cover that in a minute. Um, they then they can also access the new student online orientation, uh, and they can they can access other other uh, resources through that. But the the main thing is that once they get placement on their account, um, right now what the process is once they get placement, then they'll they'll get an email inviting them to complete a academic advising intake form, which is how academic advising is going to know to get in touch with them and to send them their education plan. Very important. They're yeah, their permission to register and also instructions on how to register. And that information is going to go to their CCP student email account. Okay, good. So main um, takeaway, I would say, guys, for most of that is be checking all forms of your email, your CCP portal to like in all the different sections, your CCP email and your main email, whether or not that's your Phila SD email from when you were in school, a personal Gmail um, or Yahoo Mail, whatever your preference, AOL, we don't care. Um, and then also, yeah, again, everything in your CCP portal. So take away, guys. But anyway, go ahead, Jeff, not to get you on. Uh, no, no, that's, uh, and that's the, the important bit. I'm sure, I'm sure in hindsight, I'm going to be forgetting something, but it's, it's, it's all good. Um, so, but the main thing is that they do need to check, check your emails, keep up on that. Worst case scenario, ask, ask someone. Um, now, after they after they've been the academic advisor has been in touch with them, then they can register for classes. Now, something that they should have been doing way in the before this is financial aid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I know one of the questions is like, uh, well, why don't we cover academic advising versus counseling first? You want me to do that? Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. So academic advising is for brand new first time college students, people that have that have not gone to college before, and they work with you for all things on the academic side of things like uh, helping you well in a pre COVID world, um, they would meet with you face to face, you know, you could chat with them, talk about what your goals are. Now they're we're doing things more online, um, you you'll, that email will serve as your first point of contact with what courses you need to be registering for and how to register. Now, during the, during the school year, you can reach out to your academic advisor with questions about what course you should be taking following semesters. They're also, they, they really, here's the thing, they, they, they want you to succeed. They want you to contact them when you have questions. Just don't, don't overload them with any, with, with like 30 emails on the weekends, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but they're out there because they really do care about the students and they want you to succeed. Now, Counseling Center, the Counseling Center is for transfer students, like if you're coming for transfer from another college or university, or if, you're, if you need a little bit, if you need help with like transferring out, if you want to talk about what your options are, or sometimes if you're just having some non-academic problems as well. 
okay? Mm -hmm. They also work with students that are on academic probation or maybe yeah. had a, a hiccup and, yeah. and need to talk with an academic advisor before you're allowed to register again. Things happen, we get it, but that's a good distinction. So academic advising is more specifically for your classes, specifically your kind of academic journey at CCP, and then counseling is more extraneous stuff. If you wanna transfer in or out, if you're having some emotional stuff going on, um, if you're having issues with a class, if you're on probation, which it happens, guys, I cannot it tell does. you how many, I did not pass classes in college. I will just put that out there right now. I failed French my senior year. So it happens to everyone. Do not panic. So academic advising, first time brand new, like fresh out of high school, ready to go to college, academic advising is going to be your, your go-to peeps. Um, counseling, academic support for if, you, if you've been on, on probation or if you need a little changing, uh, if you're thinking about withdrawing from school, uh, person, uh, personal things, career, transfer opportunities, those are all things. I have to glance over my cheat sheet. So, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, those, are the, those are the main, uh, the main, main points for that. Um, Okay, so let's go back to money, financial aid. Now, okay. cool. this is something that you guys need to be doing. Way, you can even do it way before you apply to community, apply to any college or university. The FAFSA, the free application for Get the federal done. student aid. It becomes live on October 1st for the, for the following year. There is literally no excuse to, not to get this done. And I'm going to tell you this right now, guys. Learn your social security numbers. Do it. Trust me, you, you, you got to. I had to learn mine at 13, and that was embarrassing that I didn't know it then. Um, so financial aid is something, if you want to utilize federal funding to help pay for education from the federal government, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, this is this is how you do it. You do through FAFSA and through FIA, okay? Yeah. Now, one of the biggest things that, that seems to trip up students is at 18 years old, when they're filling out the FAFSA, it asks them if they're an independent or a dependent. You are a dependent. Yes, you are dependent. <laughs> exactly. Even though you're 18, you're feeling very independent. You're a dependent. Um, dependent means that you are under 24 years old. Your family pretty much still claims you on their tax returns. There's other other factors, but just trust me on this. You you more than likely are a dependent. Mm -hmm. um, get your financial aid stuff done. Now, there's something called verification. So even if you've submitted your FAFSA and you think, ah, great, I'm done. It's all good. Um, first off, it can take up to two weeks for the federal government to send the information to your college or university. So you don't want to wait till the last minute to get this stuff done. There's also something called verification. Verification happens to a lot of students. It's nothing to, to panic about, but it is important. Now, verification, it means that the federal government is tasking the college or university that you want to attend with collecting some additional information, maybe something between the FAFSA and your tax, your IRS tax info didn't exactly match up exactly, or you could just be one out of every thousand people that select at random for, for verification. It's nothing to panic about, but it is important. And the notification for that is going to be sent to your CCP student email account. Check their CCP email. Yeah. Um, I've been working with a lot of students that are going like, what do you mean I have verification to get done? <laughs> oh, no, I did my best. I did a lot of go, yeah, but you did. <laughs> a little more, guys, a little more. Yeah. And this is something I would say the bulk of our work at 12 Plus is over the summer, specifically with CCP students, is getting that paperwork done. As Joe's saying, I'm going to echo, like, it is nothing that I would ever panic about. It's just a series of kind of bureaucratic steps that we have to take. And we can walk you through them together. Like, you're not alone with it. I know it's kind of frustrating sometimes, but we can do it. It's nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And we, for, for some of the stuff, we've actually translated the forms into electronic forms that you can mm -hmm. do and submit through your MyCCP portal. It sends a confirmation that you submitted it. So there's no question like, did I do it? Did they get it? So it just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and so, so the financial aid office wants to give you money. The bursar's office, that's where you give them money. Great. Yeah, I wanted to make a clear verification because I think for a lot of our students who might be on full financial aid, they almost never interact with the bursar's office. So mm -hmm. I like to, hi, Rihanna. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Rihanna. Um, 
but yeah, I wanted to make that clarification just because a lot of students might not ever have a need for, or they will, but not until the end when they're paying certain dues or whatever. So I'd love to just have a clarification of the difference between financial aid and the bursar's office. Sure. The bursar's office is where you would go to, to pay, pay your bill. Um, so, and we, college universities, every college university has a bursar's office, just as they have a financial aid office. It's just where, like, if you had an extra bill to pay, that's where you could go to do it. Now, you can pay your bill online through the bursar's office, through, like, online stuff. You can set up uh, a payment plan if you don't want to pay the total, you know, the full amount right away for, for your tuition stuff. We have payment plans you can, you can get on. Um, but also the one thing you got to realize is that if you owe your college university money, Mm -hmm. that might keep you from being able to register for more classes and even not be able to, you might no longer have access to your transcripts if you want to transfer. Yes. So like I work with students that have gone to other college or universities. They say like, Oh, how long were you there? Oh, I was there for, for a year, year and a half. I'm like, okay, great. Will you be transferring credits? Go like, well, do you guys need the official? And I go like, yeah, we, we need the official. Yeah. Unfortunately, you very do. So that's, that's something you got that to be mindful of. Yeah. And that's something I'll just make a quick note too, is I have heard from the bursar's office before that the limit that they can do for you to re-enroll in new classes, if you do have a balance on your account is $500. So your account has to be below $500 in order to register for classes next semester. Now that might have to be $0 for you to get your transcript out to transfer, but just a note about taking next classes. And if you do have to pay out of pocket, keep your balance below that $500 amount and you should be able to register for classes the following semester. Yeah. Uh, what, else, uh, what else do you want me to cover? I would love to just really quickly touch on any resources that you think would be good for students to take advantage of, maybe specifically thinking about the fact that things are gonna be online next semester. So what do you recommend for students who might be struggling with that? What is what is going to be transferring to a more virtual format that students can take advantage of? Absolutely, so C Community College of Philadelphia, we, we taking this very seriously. We've actually set up a virtual student resource page. If you go to our main website, it's right at the top. Um, and that lists off a whole bunch of different resources that the students can access online um, and not just academic ones, also th some things that help out with like, you know, finding affordable internet access, mm -hmm. those sort of things. Um, some of the great support services that are a community that I love, um, Single Stop, one of them, first off. Um, Single Stop handles like non-academic like issues kind of thing they like they do free tax prep for for students um they uh, can help uh, find a uh, you know legal uh support they can do all sorts of things so i really do encourage students to, to seek out single sauce if for no other reason than to do your taxes <laughs> that's just that's awesome i wish i wish i could get them to do mine um the another incredible organization is the center for male engagement the cme yeah. um, Yep, Derek Perkins, he's the head of that. He is fan freaking tastic, guys. I, I can't even begin to, like, I am, I am in awe of, of how kind a of person he is, um, how knowledgeable, and how, a, you know, just a great dresser he is. He puts me to shame. <laughs> uh, he's, he's always styling. Um, so that's, that is for uh, our uh, African American male population uh, or any students that identify as self identified as African American. Uh, as uh, African American male, um, so if you that they they help everybody though they're pretty fantastic, um, and they provide everything from from mentoring, tutoring. They 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 are just incredible incredible they're group of great, guys. yeah yeah. Um, some other support the jeez uh, the, there's just so many different things. We have the learning labs on campus, so you can go there and get. Uh, the, they moved over to the tutoring. The tutoring has moved over to the library, and the tutoring is going on. Because yeah. um, they're, re they're renovating, they're doing a mass. We're actually we're in the ma middle of a massive renovation of the library at the Ooh. moment. So yeah, uh, but libraries are so important, guys. Seriously, I cannot stress how uh, how many resources you can get uh, through your library. Everything from um, getting access to sometimes textbooks uh, to to uh, tutor to free tutoring. There's all sorts of things, and that the tutoring stuff has is being moved to online format. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else there's just so, there's so much that we've done in such a small amount of time 
You guys will I, be doing a laptop lending program, correct? For there, we, we did one for the spring and for the summer. I think they are updating the information on that. Um, I don't have that in front of me right now. But if you go to the, the virtual resources, there should be some information on that. Yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that. Um, I knew that was the case for summer classes. I kind of assumed it's going into the fall. And I just think that's another great example of ways that CCP has been really supportive of their students and ensuring even with everything that's going on, like students will still be able to take classes and access this um, model of education that I think is one of the most accessible resources in the city. So we so appreciate everything CCP has done for our students and just making education accessible for all. Do you have any kind of last parting words of advice for any students who might be starting on their CCP journeys? Take ownership of the journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the thing like you, one of the biggest mistakes I made in college was that I, I was too complacent for one of the semesters I was, I was there. Um, I just assumed everything was going to work out because it always had for me in the past. And eventually it did, but I, I had to, I had to step up my game. I had to go to class. I had to do my homework. I had to do the work that I was assigned. I couldn't get by on my charm and good looks alone. <laughs> um, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. That's that's the big one, guys. You need to ask for help. I always like to say, no one in this in this world has ever done anything of note all by themselves. So you always, yeah. yeah, you always have people that are helping you, helping support you, helping you move forward. You need to ask for help. Absolutely. And to do a little self plug, you anyone watching, like you are always welcome to reach out to 12 plus alumni, you can DM us on this platform, you can shoot me a message. I know most people have my number, and our phone, our phone number and our email. So re reach out to us for help if you're I know reaching out sometimes to professors or different <laughs> people on campus can be scary. So we are a good buffer, you know us. So feel free to reach out to us and we'll help connect you. Yeah. And my, my, should I give my email? If you're comfortable, yeah, let's just like saying it out loud and I can always sure. connect to you as well. It's all good. My, my email is pretty, pretty easy. It's jcorso, J-C-O-R-S-O at ccp.edu. Um, shoot me an email. Give me, give me something. Give me 24 hours to respond because we are getting a lot of emails right now, oh, as I you bet. can imagine. <laughs> um, but don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, just just remember to you know, include your J number so I can know who the heck I'm talking to. That makes things easier for me. For sure, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Joe. We so appreciate you and all your, the work that you've done. And yeah, feel free to like look at it, look at this later, guys, if you're watching this in the future. Um, it's good to see you all. Thank you so much. And you have a really good rest of your week. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Be safe. Be cool. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.